Hi, this is Mike, WB4HUC. And in the previous video that I did, I talked about putting the radio, the Omni 7, and the N4PY software both in front panel mode. Even though you're going to run the radio completely from the front panel, you can still start up the software. And I guess the question would be, why would you do that? If you're going to run the radio from the front panel, why do you need the software? And then I talked about how the software uh, can help you maintain connectivity with all of your other uh, programs you might want to run, your logging program, your digital mode program, uh, your pan adapter program, wh whatever else you might have that you want to communicate to the radio, any contest programs, uh, whatever. Uh, you can uh, create uh, up to five virtual serial ports and then configure the N4PY software to use those ports to talk uh, to your external programs and then of course you configure each uh, program to use uh, a different port you know in these virtual serial port pairs so it, it works well pretty seamless uh, you know but then I also talked about uh, OmniRig and how in the past I've tried to use OmniRig to do the same thing to maintain a connection with three or four uh, different pieces of software uh, through OmniRig to the radio and in that case in the case of using the N4PY software each program is on a different port in the case of OmniRig everything's on the uh, same port because you tell OmniRig like in my case my Omni 7 is on COM port 3 so you tell OmniRig and you can set up uh, two different radios if you like so you set these radios up and you tell OmniRig which COM port each of these radios is on. Then when you set up your logging program or your digital program or your contesting program, whatever it is you have, you tell that program to use either OmniRig Rig 1 or OmniRig Rig 2 depending on which radio is connected to which side. So, and uh, I, I think I had talked about how when I had done that in the past, I had troubles with it and I've been playing with this thing all day today and I think I've pretty much figured out uh, what all the issues were so that's what we're going to talk about today is using OmniRig and the Omni 7 to talk to different uh, pieces of software so you can see the camera is uh, sorry about that I just had a uh, had to take a bit of a pause here. So you can see the camera set up, it's aimed at the radio and uh, also capturing the screen. So we can see everything that's going on while I'm doing this. So the N4PY software won't be used. It's not running now and we won't use it. Uh, but I have set up OmniRig. So if you've never used OmniRig before, I'm not going to really go through all the details of how to set it up, but you can go out and find it and install it. So we'll double click on OmniRig here and you can see you have rig 1 which is none, I'm not using it rig 2 set up for the Omni 7 so here's the 6, here's the 7 and then COM port number 3 which uh, the radio, there's a cable in the back of the radio that plugs into the computer and it's on COM port number 3 set up all of the uh, communications parameters and that's it now one trick is I'm using uh, my computer is on 64-bit Windows 8.1 professional so I don't know if this varies uh, between versions of Windows or you know if it varies or if it always has to be done the same way but if I don't start each of the programs that I want to use if I don't start them if I just double click on them and start them. The first one will connect to OmniRig and then the others will not. So I'll demonstrate that uh, in a few minutes but um, so what what I have to do uh, is whichever program I want to start so let's start with uh, HDSDR. So I have to right click on the uh, icon and then I have to say run as administrator and then you're going to get this user account control window say yes and
and you can see that we've come up on the frequency that's in the radio and if we say start we get our display and everything's hunky-dory you can go in here and click and the radio will change frequencies you can uh, change it here and it'll change frequencies now I'm not going to use the knob on the radio but I'm going to use the uh, 302 remote tuning control and I change frequencies and you can see that okay a bit of a delay but then you can see that OmniRig does change so the only thing I've noticed about uh, OmniRig is there's a bit of a delay between the different pieces and it's it's not consistent sometimes there is no delay sometimes there's a delay of uh, half a second or second sometimes there's a delay of two seconds uh... that may not matter to you it's not a big deal uh, but but the thing works so now let's go to let's say wsjtx and again right click say run as administrator you get the user account control and he's come up on uh the radio's frequency and of course it's in red because we're not on any valid or, or any we're not on uh, a frequency that's used for whatever digital mode we're set up for so if we go in here and choose FT8 okay watch up here so that was a fairly long delay but I have uh, WSJTX set up to do rig split so you can see it put the radio in split mode and it's uh, changed the transmit frequency based on uh, based on the uh, audio tone down here so that's what split mode does it, it wants to keep the transmit audio tone in or around 1500 Hertz so it'll offset the transmitter uh, to make this come out uh, so that your your audio tone is is it's either on or around 1500 Hertz or it's between 1500 and 2000 I don't remember but anyway you can see that it's communicating with the radio and it did what it was supposed to do it put it in split mode it set it the frequency so that's all working okay and let's crank up you wouldn't never do this in real life but let's crank up another digital mode program now here's a little gotcha so FL Digi as far as I know does not uh, use OmniRig. There's no selection in FL Digi uh, to tell it to use OmniRig. So if you want FL Digi to have the radio frequency and its display for logging and, and whatnot, you have to go about it a different way. And what I've read is, and, and it works for me, but uh, is you tell FL Digi to use XML RPC for communicating uh, to other programs and then in your logging program specifically your logging program so in your logging program you tell it to use XML RPC so what happens is uh, what happens is is uh, you, you set your logging program up to use OmniRig and then you tell it to communicate to FL Digi through XML RPC. So uh, your logging program talks to your radio through OmniRig, and then your logging program talks to FL Digi through the XML RPC uh, protocol or connection. So let's do that. So once again, you got to right click, say run as administrator. And here's uh, FL Digi. And I'm going to take the radio. I'm going to take the radio out of split mode just to keep things simple here. So you can see we, we're out of split mode. So I'm going to move this back up here. So we don't have the radio frequency, but if you go to configure rig control, normally through the N4PY software, I set up RigCat and I tell it. Uh, I'm connecting to a TS590S because the N4PY software uses the Kenwood command set to communicate with external stuff. But I'll click use RigCat and then I'm talking to the N4PY software to specify the COM port. 
Well, here we don't do that. So this is unclicked. Go here, XML RPC. Rig control via external program using XML RPC remote calls. So you click this. And then you can say initialize after you click it. And I've already done all that. So anyway, you turn this on here. And then in uh, my logging program, which is Logic version 9, say run as administrator. And watch this. Okay, so here we go. So Logic is talking to the radio through OmniRig 2, uh, OmniRig rig, rig number 2. And then he's communicating with uh, FL Digi through the XML RPC connection. And the way you do that is here's the FL Digi window. So uh, you activate that window up here in forms and go down and say FL Digi, and that turns on that connection. Now, the one little gotcha about this is you have to start FL Digi before you start the logic logging program and then when you shut down you have to shut logic down first then you can shut down FL Digi. So you gotta do things in the right order. But it works. So now everybody's on the same frequency here, right? And if we tune the radio and I'm gonna use a tuning knob you can see that everybody's keeping up, except down here. So that was quite a delay, two or three seconds. And look up here. That was a little bit of a delay. So now look at FL Digi. He's not moving, but when I stop, now he'll change. Same thing with uh, WSJT. He's not moving. There he goes. So this works. There's a bit of a delay to it. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, you know, that's great. Uh, but it does work. Let me pull this up. There we go. But it does work. And so I have a one, two, three, four uh, different programs uh, talking to the radio through. Uh, OmniRig, or in the case of FL Digi, vicariously through Logic 9, which is talking to the radio through OmniRig. So, uh, and one of the problems that I had before, I talked about uh, problems that I'd had in the past. One of the problems I'd had before is not uh, clicking, right clicking, and selecting Run as Administrator. Because if you don't do that, let's shut everything down. Okay, no, I can't do that. I have to shut Logic down first. Then I can shut down FL Digi. Then I can shut these others down. So let's uh, see if I can get this to do the same thing twice in a row. So I'll click Run as Administrator. And then I'll click on the Logic program run as administrator now let's click HDSDR Oh, okay, I said I wasn't going to do that. So let's don't click Run as Administrator. Let's don't do this. Let's just uh, open it the way we usually would. So now you can see it's not doing anything. So there you go. If you don't, in my case, and this I don't know if this is true for everybody or not, but in my case, if I do not tell it to run as administrator, 
then it looks like the first program that starts gets OmniRig and then the others won't communicate. So here we go. Could not find OmniRig. Please install OmniRig first. Well, we already did that. So you can see here uh, I can turn the knob, watch the radio in the upper left hand corner, nothing happens. And if I go to options, OmniRig, tell it to sync rig number two, I'll get the I'll get the message again that you can't find OmniRig. At least I thought I would get the message again that he can't find OmniRig. But in any case, it doesn't work. So, okay, now I can't even shut the thing down. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to shut down. Okay, there we go. Could not find OmniRig. Now I can shut it down. But if I go back and do run as administrator... Well, that may not work either. Sometimes it works and sometimes it didn't. You saw the first time I started it up, uh, it connected and it was working fine. Now it's not working again. So just uh, always, just always quick, or in my case, you can, you'll have to experiment with it to see what works for you. But for me, I always have to quick uh, to run as administrator and again like I said in the case of FL Digi you gotta come at it in a roundabout way since FL Digi doesn't uh, talk to OmniRig anyway uh, this has run a little longer than I wanted it to but uh, I did want to go back and revisit uh, OmniRig and try to figure out what I was doing before that wasn't working and I think I've gotten it all figured out so I still like the N4PY software better because you don't have to think about anything you just set your software up to use whichever virtual serial port you want it to use. You don't have to fool with, we'll start this one in this order and start this one in that order. Uh, you don't have to remember to tell it to run as administrator. It just works, okay? Um, this works too, if you, and it's free. You don't have to pay any money for it, but I, I, I still like the N4PY uh, software better than OmniRig and uh, so anyway once again uh, I hope this is helpful to uh, someone out there who might be interested in it and I appreciate you watching